Hey everyone, my name is Nathan. I am a student architect and photographer based here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Today I'll be showing you how I built this setup, what items I use to be the most productive when working or studying from home, and which items you need to do the same. Welcome to my desk setup tour. This space hasn't always looked like this. It's evolved over the last five years from this to this, and finally to this. It has been an ongoing development and thanks to my Instagram and photography work, I've been able to build up this setup I have today. If you want to know how I've been able to afford all this as a student and how I get brands to send me products, just let me know in the comments below that you wanna see that. Oh, and everything shown in the video will be linked in the description below. When I think about a workspace, I think of four main things that make up your setup personality, function, aesthetics, and the budget. Aesthetics is woven into every item on the desk, but the main part is the color. For my desk setup, I went with a black and white color scheme using RGB lights so I can add color to the setup whenever I want. Although lately, I haven't really been doing that. I've also really wanted a darker aesthetic to my setup. So to do that, I had to choose a black wall paint. I went with a Broadway paint color and a matte finish. The matte finish allows for a soft light diffusion against the wall which I prefer over the glossy finish. This color also has a slight green tone to it, which gives it a slightly warmer feel over the cooler blacks. Moving on to the most important part in my opinion is the functional aspects of the setup. Let's take a look at the layout of my desk. My room is fairly small, so my desk is pushed up to the corner opposite of the entrance. The desk is made of two linen tabletops connected to form an L shape. I have an Alex drawer from Ikea, which holds any pencils, camera equipment, and other accessories. The main desk that holds my monitor is a standing desk by Motion Gray called the Motion Series Standing Desk. This is the newest addition to my setup, and I absolutely love it. For someone who can sit in front of the computer 10 plus hours a day editing photos and drawing floor plans, having the ability to stand is amazing. I have two preset heights, one for standing and one for sitting. The motors are also fairly quiet, so if I'm up early or late working, it won't wake up anyone else in the house. For my peripherals, I use the MX Master Mouse and the Razer Ornata Chroma Keyboard with a large Aki desk pad under it. The MX Master Mouse isn't quite as nice as the third generation, but I haven't felt the need to upgrade yet. Same with the keyboard. I haven't gotten super into keyboards like many other people, so this has worked just fine for me. These two are still great budget options in my opinion when compared to the more expensive options. They often go on sale significantly, so I wouldn't buy these at full price. For the speakers, I'm using the Edifier R12 ADT powered bookshelf speakers. The sound from it is great for its price and I love the wood design. They're fairly big though, so if you have a small desk, I would recommend getting some smaller speakers. You can actually take the speaker covers off, which gives it a whole new look. I prefer leaving them on because I find this looks cleaner, but it's nice to have that option. I use a 34 inch ultra wide IPS monitor by LG. If I was to upgrade one thing right now, it would be this. However, this is still a great budget productivity monitor. The extra screen real estate is super handy when editing video or photos and even nicer when doing 3D modeling. I can have floor plans or inspiration drawings up while modeling in Revit or SketchUp. It has a matte finish on it, which helps prevent glare, but it does reduce the overall sharpness of the screen. I use the BenQ light bar to light up my setup when working at night. Right now here in Vancouver, it gets dark at around 4 or 5 p.m., so this is super handy to have. I wouldn't say that this item is necessary, as it is quite expensive, but it is a really nice luxury item. I use the Vivo monitor desk mount to hold up my monitor. It's built mainly for monitors up to 32 inches, but can still hold my 34 inch. You can see that there's a slight angle from the weight of the monitor. The cheap lemon tabletop is dented slightly because of this, but it doesn't bother me because it is a cheap tabletop that I can replace in the future. For the office chair, I wanted one that could adjust the seat front and back and the only one that I could find at a reasonable price here in Canada was the IKEA Marquez chair. I don't have armrests on this because they always hit the front of my desk. Overall, this is a great chair and I've had no issues with it. Since I stand half the time I'm working, the chair isn't as important to me as it would be if I didn't have a standing desk. I won't get too much into the PC, but the question I get asked the most is what case I'm using. I'm using the white Corsair 220T. I don't know too much about how well this case performs, but I bought it because I like the look of it. I'll also throw up the specs of the PC here on screen and in the description below. 
In short, the computer is good enough for what I do. I can make a separate video about the build and the performance as an architect student and a photographer of it if you guys would like. Just let me know in the comments below. The other side of my desk is used for drawing and modeling, but recently it's kind of just become a place where I throw things if my computer space gets too messy. I keep my laptop out of the way using the Macaulay laptop stand. This is nice to have because I only use my laptop while I'm in school, so having it vertical frees up a lot of space on top of my desk. Above that, I store my keys and other everyday carries on a magnet bar made by Alpaca. They hang on with a magnet and are easily removable. Moving on to the thing that caught your attention from the beginning, my neon sign. This is where the personality of the setup starts to come in. I would say that this is the most unnecessary category out of the four, but it's definitely nice to have. This was custom made by Sketch and Etch. My favorite thing to do is camp and snowboard in the mountains. So this logo represents that with the mountain outline in white and my initials below it in blue. The sign has multiple levels of brightness and it's varying modes too. It gets so bright that it lights up my entire room at night. I don't always have it on, but if I do, it stays at around 30% brightness because anything brighter than that is too much for my eyes. While all these fancy lights and neon signs look amazing, I rarely actually have it on while I do work. I usually just use my light bar so there isn't any extra distractions around me. Just because you see all these setups with fancy lights on them, don't feel that you need it to create a productive workspace. The headphone stand I'm using is by Tilted Nation. It's an RGB headphone stand that can alternate colors. I usually find myself leaving it on white because I find this looks cleaner and matches with my setup better. Moving down under my monitor. This is where I like to display my hobbies. By keeping what I love to do in front of me, I'm always reminded to go out and do it. I display my architecture books, camera lenses, phone stand, and best of all, this drone dome. This DJI drone dome charges your drone and keeps it secure. But really, it's all for aesthetics. This is easily my most favorite item on this desk. Here on my pegboard, there are some personal items that make the space more meaningful to me. This pegboard is made by Umbra and I got it from Costco. Finally, it's the budget. Depending on what you do at your desk the most, what you prioritize may vary. But I think for most people, it should be function first. So your desk, your computer, monitor, keyboard, and mouse. These are the most important items. I would recommend spending more money on these items rather than skimping out on them and getting items just for the aesthetics. The goal of this desk setup was to create an environment where I could be the most productive. I'm extremely fortunate to have a setup like this, and some of you may wonder how I'm able to afford all of this as an architect student. More than half of the products in this space were sent to me by companies. If you want to learn more about how I was able to achieve that, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. See you guys next time.